that I've wanted to make for a really, really long time. And I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how I annotate my books. This is a video I've wanted to make for such a long time and I'm finally getting around to it. The background has kind of changed, I hope you guys like it. I've kind of added in a few more little details just to make it a little bit more personal but yeah, I really like how it's turned out although you can't really read this quickly. There we go, <laughs> that's a bit better. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's just get into it. So the first thing I do when I annotate a book is decide why I'm annotating it. There are different books that I annotate different ways. For example, I have the whole of the Song of Ice and Fire series. Obviously the top two are missing because I'm going to be using them as examples. But um, yeah, I do annotate these very heavily. Yeah, I annotate the crap out of these books. This is actually really interesting seeing how my annotations developed and changed throughout this series. So in the first book it looks like this. So I didn't colour coordinate my tabs for the first book and I used sticky tabs to jot in little information. So for this one it says Ned and Robert are discussing Danny and Drogo. So I put little um, post-it notes if they were important uh, scenes and things and I did highlight towards the end of the book I started highlighting. Um, I don't think I did this at the beginning. I started about halfway through um, highlighting. Um, I really like to highlight. I think it looks really satisfying and just personal. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to write in their books, so using sticky notes and post-its and stuff is a really great option if you're not someone that likes to write in your books. But yeah, I definitely started out just using post-it notes and sticky tabs in this one and yeah although it does look like I've obviously gone back at some point and highlighted some of these but yeah I did definitely start off just using sticky tabs so moving on to the second book I used even more sticky tabs and yeah I didn't colour coordinate these again um I think if I remember correctly what I was doing is just using them up in the order that they came on the packet so I'd use the first strip and the second strip and then carry on rather than actually having separate colours um, but again, I used post-it notes. I don't think I really highlighted in this one. No, I didn't highlight in this one. But yeah, I did use post-it notes and sticky tabs. And that was my main kind of annotation style, I guess. So moving on to the third book, I finally started colour coordinating. So I used different colours for different things like plot or character development or romance or whatever. I can't remember which ones I used. But I used different colours to coordinate with different aspects of my annotations and I also colour tabbed. This is something I do a lot and I love to do this. I give each character their own colour and I did this with most of these books after this one um, and I put in the different tabs for the different characters so when I was reading I would know when my favourite characters chapters were coming up and it definitely helped motivate me. These are big books, they're very dense. I'd say that it definitely helped motivate me to keep reading and to get to the next chapter with my favourite characters because I lived for John's chapters and I as chapters and I just it really did help so that is one thing I would recommend if you're reading a very dense book like these and you need something to kind of keep you motivated tabbing the different chapters really helps um, or at least it helped with me I don't know but yeah it's really funny looking back through these books actually because I've forgotten how I tabbed them and looking back it's actually really interesting but with the fourth book or part two of the third book which as you can see is a bit trashed um, I didn't actually finish annotating this. As you can see I got to about a quarter of the way through and I was highlighting, everything was colour coordinated, I did all the characters and then I obviously got so invested in the story that I just stopped annotating. So that does happen um, quite often where I will be really into tabbing and annotating my books and then I just get so invested in the story that I forget and then I just don't end up carrying on doing that so this was one of them <laughs> so this is another example this is book four and I at this point had really gotten into colour coordinating so again all the chapters are annotated and tabbed so I know whose chapter is which from looking at the top and we also have colour coordinated colour we also have colour coordinated tabs for different parts of the story 
I did not highlight this one. Um, probably because this is the biggest one. <laughs> um, I probably just didn't want to spend my time annotating this really heavily when I could be reading it because I remember being really invested in this one and again it is the biggest one. So yeah. Same thing happened with A Dance of Dragons Part 1. I annotated all the different characters and then got distracted <laughs> and never finished annotating the actual book but again that happens a lot. It happened um, especially towards the end, as I said, when I was really invested in this series and yeah, I ended up forgetting to tab them, but it happens. It happens. So I haven't actually finished the series because um, obviously the series itself isn't finished, but I've not finished the books that are out yet. I still have one more to go, but even though we know that there's more coming, I swear every two minutes George Martin says that we're getting the next book and it just doesn't happen so I'm gonna wait and finish. I'm like a half of the way through so I'm just gonna finish the other half when we know for certain when the next book is coming out and then I can kind of chill and read the last one but yeah. Um, anyway that's not what this video is about. So there are other ways um, that I annotate books and again it does definitely depend on the genre and why I'm doing it so those books are some of my favourite books ever. So I annotated those because they're very dense, they're very high fantasy obviously and there's a lot of character development, there's lots of different characters, there's a lot going on and it really helps me to kind of keep track of everything. <laughs> but there are other books that I like to annotate just for reviews. So if I'm going to be writing a review on a book I will annotate it for those purposes but also sometimes I just enjoy tabbing my favourite parts of books. So I read Dog Named Beautiful by Rob Kugler and I annotated this, I tabbed it, I did not highlight it but I used some cute dog sticky tabs and I basically just annotated bits that meant a lot to me, nice moments, um, things that I connected with, that sort of thing. Um, I like to do that in memoirs and biographies and stuff like that because I just think it helps to um, kind of just show the bits of the book that you really really enjoy, I don't know, but that's kind of why I annotate these kinds of books. So again I have And I Darken by Kirsten White. This is another one that I annotated for a similar reason to the um, Song of Ice and Fire series. Um, this was more just because it was a book that I was really enjoying and it was very, um, this isn't anywhere near as dense but there's a lot going on still and um, there's a lot of character development so I did highlight this one the whole way through. So there's a lot of highlighting and annotations and just sticky tabs through the whole of this book. Um, if you're someone that doesn't like to stop every couple of seconds and highlight in your books, one thing I would recommend doing is to stop every, say you read for half an hour, at the end of that half an hour spend 10 minutes just going through and highlighting all the bits that you enjoyed at the end of that half an hour, if that makes sense. Like at the end of a reading session, go back and highlight what you enjoyed from that specific reading section and it really helps to give you time to think but also not to have to stop constantly while you're reading to highlight. That's something that I personally do and it really helps me. This one I didn't colour coordinate obviously, I did the same thing as I did with the Song of Ice and Fire books early on, I just used them in the order that they were on the packet but sometimes I just want to do that. I don't want to highlight and annotate too extensively, I just want to put in some sticky notes when I think something is important when it's character development that's really exciting or when a big plot twist happens um, and it's not too um, it's not too formal it's a very informal way of annotating so sometimes I keep a little notebook or I use the notes app on my phone and I just type in some notes um, on the books I'm currently reading and the things that I'm enjoying the things I'm not enjoying um, anything that I need to remember for reviews or just generally um, and I find that's really helpful as well if you're someone that doesn't like to actually physically annotate your books then having a separate notebook um, just to kind of write down your thoughts is a very good option and it's one that I have done in the past. I don't tend to do it too much anymore because I'm quite happy to annotate my books but if there's a book that I don't want to annotate, for example I have signed books or special editions and I don't want to annotate them then I might use a notebook instead but generally I tend to just annotate my books now and I really like it. I know some people really hate annotating books and they think that it's like ruining the book and that's fine, you do you, if you don't like to do it just don't do it but 
I really enjoy annotating my books. I think it makes them more personal. It means that I can go back like I just have and look at how my annotation style has changed, the parts of the story that I really enjoyed. And it just means something extra to me. It makes them a little bit more special. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video interesting. I can definitely do a follow up and do a more practical video of how I annotate books. Um, maybe I'll do a vlog or something and show you how I actually do it in real time, if that makes sense. But definitely let me know if you guys would be interested in that and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you have any tips for annotating books because I would really enjoy hearing them and you'll see me in the next video. Bye guys!